They want a truce, they're willing to offer us 300 deciduous trees. No, you guys screwed up. Pisces isn't in our area of influence anymore because of the damage that you did to folks died here. And because of that, we have no reason to let you have peace now because all we get is this crap system Esh. When our influence surrounds Pisces again, you guys can have peace. Until then, prepare to die. Let's get good. Welcome back to Endless Space 2 Supremacy. We are the He Show. That is the religious He Show. We are only doing military at the moment because we can't stave off warfare. We were trying to peacefully convert the Sophons and they didn't like that. So now we have to fight them. But thankfully, in the last episode, we just managed to turn around the war pressure. So it is now in our favor. Plus one, it's not a lot. But the more of their units we kill, the more key we're going to get, which means more fealty foundations, which means more war pressure, which means that we can kind of bully them into a peace treaty and then absorb some of their places anyway with our influence. So that's what we're going to do right now. We've got these guys sort of controlling Pisces, but they don't have enough siege to really pull Pisces down. So what I think I'm going to do is develop a new siege vessel for us right now. Uh, and we're going to go take a look at our support class vessel for that. Unless, and this is something I'm I'm super curious about, unless we can get a higher siege value on our little support ship. So let's find our medium support ship, the coordinator right here. And let's go ahead and just fill it up with siege modules. I just want to see the maximum amount of siege we can get on it. Not so worried about putting a bunch of tank on it, just really want to see what we can get siege value wise. Uh, so in this case, that will be 50... 250 on this. 250. All right, let's go take a look at what we can do with our smaller ships now. Probably could have done that a different way, but the reason I want to check this is because we do have the extra slots. I think it's still going to be a lot more on the coordinator. Yeah, because this is only 25. Even with the extra slots, it's going to be a lot more on the coordinator. But the coordinator is also going to cost us more resources. Uh, and we are really, really light on Hyperium. This uses Hyperium for those slots, so maybe the coordinator is actually going to be better in this case. Yeah, I think it is. Although, no, the coordinator uses 5 Hyperium just as a base. And we're only gaining 11 Hyperium a turn right now. So, if we do that, like, that, that's a huge, huge hit. But, I mean, we take a similar hit if we go with our smaller support vessels. What if we don't use the Hyperium slots? So, if we opt out of the Hyperium slots and we don't put any speed boosters or anything on this, then it's actually only going to cost us 4 Titanium, and we're bringing in 12 Titanium a turn. So, we could produce 3 of these a turn without any issues. Uh, if we go ahead and throw some guns on just to have some guns on... Well, in that one slot we can do it, and then we won't have to use any Hyperium. Uh, so, this could be a super cheap Siege ship. I'm gonna... we'll keep this. We'll keep this. We'll just call this Junk Siege. Because that's really what it is. It's not going to be good for anything but sieging, and we'll build a couple of them not here. We'll build a couple of them over here, unless we have something better to build. We could build the Behemoth C3, or the Behemoth 3, yeah, yeah. sorry guys, the Behemoth C3 Center, but that's actually not super beneficial for us right now because we have a ton of Behemoths, and doubling the dust cost of the Behemoths wouldn't help us a lot. It would actually probably set us back a whole lot. Next turn, we're going to be looking to buy the remaining Orichalix that we need in order to build the Obelisk of all space-time. I'm not sure how many of these. I think we have to build five of them, but I'm not entirely sure because I've never gone for this victory condition. Nice. That, that's our pets. Good, good job, cats. Nailed it. Uh, anyways, the dog has now broken up the cat fight. Everything is fine. Oh gosh, look at that though. The benefits to that are still amazing. I just, I'm not sure how many we need to win. Construct all the other buildings of this type to secure a wonder victory. So, I wonder if... Are they on this upper tier maybe? I'm, I'm trying to figure that out. Um, yeah, weird. Oh, is there one on the outskirts of every every one of these, maybe? No, that's not how that works either. So we built that one. Eh, I don't know. We'll figure it out when we get there. Next turn, we should have the resources to build that. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this in science 
for the moment, so we'll build our siege ships when we need them. We don't have to have them right now. Uh, realistically, we are kind of controlling our space right now and just killing everything that comes in. If we can get enough war pressure without invading, we may just avoid invading altogether. So let's go ahead and end our turn and see what comes up for us next turn. So we did just get a new tech, and if I'm not mistaken, I think it was the mining tech for behemoths. Oh, we've got to level up for this guy. Uh, okay, so we're going to work our way down all the stuff on the right, but I'm starting with this just because I happened to click it already. That sounds like a combat alert. That is hopefully not a bad thing. So this is good. No, wait, he's a combat guy. That's not good. I got confused for a second and thought he was a governor. Oof. Shield capacity isn't bad. Hole plating is also not bad. Uh, let's go with... Actually, damage on his ship isn't bad either. We'll do that. We'll get the plus 80% damage on his ship, because he's got decent firepower. Although I really wish the hero ships leveled up as time went on. Okay, so we do have a combat there. We'll deal with it when we need to. Whoa. Oh. Shall defend the faith, They're threightening us. Requires. Okay, I'm gonna minimize this. Dude, whatever. Take the 1800 dust. It's pennies. Take your pennies and get out of my hair. Uh, these guys are all beams now. Look at that. They learned. They learned. That's not good for us. Uh, in this case, we have nothing that's going to be really great for us. We should probably change our tactics around after this fight. So for the time being, I'm going to go with that anyway, because it's going to bring us into close range for them, and we have shorter range weapons. Go on, guys. You got this. All right, cool. We got a decisive victory. Took a little bit of damage on that battleship, but it's not enough for me to be concerned. Uh, great. The church is happy with us. Awesome. We, we like you guys, too, because all you ask for is money that we have so much of. It's ridiculous. Uh, okay. Something is ready to do things here. Guys, I don't... I don't need you to do things. You just sleep here. That's what you do. You sleep, and the system generates a ton of resources. That's perfect. Just keep sleeping. Uh, he shows have spawned all the places... What is our current observance? It's Diligence Ritual, which is currently active. How many turns do we have left? Two turns on Diligence Ritual, so we'll have to do another one of those soon. Uh, this is really cool, and I want to build it. I'm going to build the system battery here, guys, because we really want to see how this works. Like, the idea that your system can shoot enemy ships for 2,000 damage is kind of crazy. And I really want to see how that works. Uh, we'll actually watch the combat when we use that, because it'll be really interesting to see. Okay, I think that's fine for that system. Dekel is doing Dekel things. Uh, they are also under Diligence. No, did we not do a Diligence ritual on Dekel? That's crazy. Uh, we'll actually, you know what? No, 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 no. Don't do that. We'll wait until the other ones re-up on Diligence rituals, and then we'll do it. Maybe we didn't because their pop was so low. Yeah, because there's a Diligence Ritual here, here, and not at Folks Died here. Okay, so we will make sure to get everybody in on the next round of Diligence Rituals. Sure, that is all good and fine. Fast Miner 2 is now accessible, Deep Miner 2 is accessible, and Core Miner is accessible. So Core Miner is what we were thinking about going after to try to generate more of the Orichalix that's in Kerr and things like that. But... I don't really like the idea of building extra depletion, so for now we may just look at that as another tech towards another behemoth. Uh, we do want to come in and change our tactics here, because at some point I pulled power to shields out, because it didn't seem that useful. Um, now it does. Ooh, plus 50% plating and shield absorption on ships alone in flotilla. That's actually interesting for the way I like to manually lay ships out. And that's actually really, really nice for manual ship layout. I kind of like that. If we if we weren't short-range ships right now, I would go with that. But since we are short-range ships, I think this is going to be our best bet. Uh, we also kind of want this one, though. So I might take Power to Shields right here and then grab Get Lucky in place of Revive and Rebuild. And... Let's take a look at the market this turn and see what we can pick up as far as Orichalix goes. With 6.5k, we can get not very much. Not very much at all. Um, 
I'm gonna wait. There's there's better things that we can use that dust for than extremely overpriced Orichalix. Anything in here worth us grabbing? Not particularly. Okay. So let's... Uh, I don't know what we want to do next. We, I mean, obviously we want to defeat more Sophons and do more damage to their places so that we can generate more war pressure. I'm just not sure what the best choice we can make to do that is. Like, we could come up here and start invading Esh, and they would have a really hard time doing anything about it. But I feel like going after Cepheus here might be better, so I'm gonna send these guys over to Cepheus just to orbit the system and start to invade. That should at least force them to try to come and interact with us, which will give us a chance to beat on some more ships, get some more key, all the nice things that we like to do. Uh, Alright. Those are all fine, and we have one ship who's just not doing... You are doing something. You're guarding. That is your entire job. Stop asking me for orders. Okay, fine. Do that then. It's weird, because like I feel like that UE ship is stuck there, even though the blockade's only supposed to hold them for a turn. So I don't know, maybe they're just like chilling. Maybe they're just scouting our systems because they're getting ready to attack us. This is our main governor, our very first governor. He is pretty much leveled all the way out. Uh, more influence, that's fine. Traces of the photobombers' activities are numerous. Investigate. Uh, we didn't do great at this, but we got five key from it anyway. I mean, I'll take that. Intercept the photobomber's ship. Where? Where is that? Too bad another empire completed this. Oh, that sucks. Uh, they got the Reanimator, which is a system improvement for defense that just gives a ton of extra capacity. Kogiwa Brightblade has gained enough... Okay, we already did that. And we gained a population on Folks Died here. Okay, let's... Yes, let's get more combat right here. Uh, so these guys should go down very easily now, especially since we have this option. Almost considering going with that, though. It really depends on the range spread. No, our range spread on that isn't good enough for that. I'm going to go with the uh, shield absorption just to reduce their damage by quite a bit. Decisive victory. We didn't really take any damage. They retreated flat out. So I wonder what effect that had on our war pressure with them. What do you want? We're kind of busy. Oh yeah, that's, that's a lot better. That's 1.6. So we're slowly regaining our war pressure. Uh, and these guys are going to be a big help in that, I think, because they are now able to siege this system. Only 18 points of siege damage every turn, but that's still building that war pressure and forcing the Sophons to send troops out. Uh, we actually don't really want to invade. That's just going to cost us manpower that we're not producing a ton of in the first place. So if we can get them to waste ships fighting us in space, that works out perfectly for us. Ah, I wish... Okay, yeah, just sleep until a probe is built, because you never build probes. Problem solved. And you just guard. I don't need you to do anything else. I don't know why I keep saying you're not... You don't have orders. You have orders. Guard the system. That is your sole job. Uh, Alright. So Kerr is still doing dust. I don't know if we want Kerr doing dust. I think we'd rather have Planet Cracker right here, just because science is going to be super, super integral right now. How many turns? One turn left on Diligence Ritual. And then when is our next election, just to be safe? Next election is in four turns. Uh, and what is our next observance? Where does it show that? I can't remember where we find the next observance. Oh well, we'll figure it out when we get there. I mean, we don't really need to know what it is. I think the next observance is the manpower one anyway, which isn't very good for us. Uh, so yeah, that's it. We're just gonna end our turn. Continue to generate that mad money. We're basically waiting until we get a spike in the or a spike down in the price of the Orichalix so we can buy a bunch of it at once. And in the meantime, we're just kind of killing Sophon ships. Hey, we've got combats. I like how it glows those now when people come into them, but I don't know. Oh, I think that's to show that they got caught. And yet we can't attack them. That's weird. We can attack these guys. Uh, and that smasher is going to get wrecked. We'll do that one. This should be a really easy victory. Oh, he ran away. Okay, he ran away, so we still gained one key and hopefully some war pressure, because that's actually the thing we're more interested in anyway. Still not entirely sure why neither of these fleets can attack, because we only attacked with one of these fleets. 
They have their full movement. Oh, these guys just retreated. That's what it is. They retreated, but they're trapped there, so it won't let us attack them. That's probably what's going on. Plus 2% damage on fleet is great for uh, each CP. I mean, it would be better if it was for each ship, because then we could just put a bunch of uh, low CP ships in her fleet and get a bigger bonus out of it, but it doesn't work that way, sadly. Dekel is building the Koimaki Ma Koi Academy. Sorry. Uh, and that is... Excellent, excellent, excellent. One turn to Crust Engineering, which will give us the Aura Chalix that's located on Kerr. I can't remember the size of that deposit, but I think we've already... We haven't built the uh, stuff to get the deposit up. Currently three, so if we do this... It'll be five and... Oh, six instead. So six Aura Chalix a turn still isn't as much as we'd like, but it's not bad. Lots and lots of Transvine... Uh, what systems are still in need of a level 3 upgrade? Kerr does not have it. Folks Died Here has it. Aldebaran, of course, has it. Uh, Ebony, we've never actually colonized. We could colonize Ebony at this point, though, if we really wanted to. Dekel does not have it, so Kerr and Dekel need the Transvine to uh, upgrade. However, it's not just Transvine, it's this as well, but we have enough of that, so we would need... Oops. Well, that's a way to make it easier, actually. So we have 20, we need 75, so we need 55 of these. And that should give us another city that'll be upgraded to level 3. I'm gonna go ahead and do that upgrade on... Hmm. I'll do it on Kerr, because Kerr has more planets, so it makes more sense, I think, to do it on Kerr. It's gonna take two turns to get to that, that's kind of annoying. And we've got these things in queue that we may actually buy out, although we probably get better value buying things out over here. No, they're both actually fairly even right now. Um, okay, so if they're fairly even and we're not going to gain a whole bunch of value by buying those out, where can we get the most value for our dust? We could get other heroes, but I don't think that that actually adds a whole lot to what we're doing right now. Especially since we're still trying to level heroes and uh, get them to the point where we can see if the ability that gives them key passively every turn works. So we just buy 18k worth of Orichalix. I mean, that would actually put us really, really close. We're like two off. Uh, which means that next turn, for if Crust Engineering triggers at the beginning of the turn, we should have enough Orichalix right at the start of our next turn. Come on, come on, give me the two Orichalix. Oh wait, do we need 80 of the Quadranix as well? Because that might be, that's obviously going to be a problem if we do. Uh, destroy all the pirate fleets, five out of seven. Participants are all of us. The fleets are up here. Y'all want me to, to go... No, and we need to build another citadel now that I remember that. We should probably focus in on that too. Uh, she is leveling up. Influence is really strong. Science is stronger. Uh, yeah, let's go with science. Science is very, very helpful to us right now, because we have the production capabilities to build pretty much anything we want. We just need more cool things to build. And we should be doing our diligence rituals this turn, so every system is going to diligence ritual right now. Every single one. Diligence. 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 And... Diligence. Get us all that extra dust, guys. Okay. Okay. So with those done, let's check out what our production... Yeah, that, that's switched over to Diligence now. We did just get Integrated Theaters, so we have more CP now. We've got V2A Attack, which gives us air units for ground invasions. And we have the Boarding Pod. These are things that we just kind of went back to to pick up because we kept getting attacked. Uh, this Iron Banner right here, though, is something that interests me. And that's the key range. There are some very cool things we can do with that. Although, I think at this point... No, I'm wrong. Uh, even though the military ship's key range is combining with this science ship's key range, it actually still isn't covering folks died here. You can see the red circle showing the effect, the, or the effect radius of Way of the Obsidian Eagle, and it's on every system but folks died here. Theoretically, if we put an iron banner on this, it should extend far enough to get that one when we use Way of the Obsidian Eagle too, which would be really good. Geo-industrial plants don't really care that much. Orichalix refining. That's what we're after. We did not get Orichalix for this turn, though, which is sad. Uh, and I'm probably going to buy these out 
Yeah, I'm going to buy those out because we need the Orichalix more than I care about that dust. Uh, let's see... Oh, it's only 40. It's only 40. So what are we short now? We're just short Hyperium. Hey, Hyperium. How much of you is there available? 19. Okay, so we got 19 more Hyperium. Man, Hyperium is just scarce as heck in the galaxy, isn't it? How much is coming from this? Just one. So even if we built the improvements there, that would only add four to our Hyperium generation, which would make it 15 per turn. That's still a lot more. I think we're going to do that. I mean, we don't have to deal with expansion disapproval. I'm trying to think of what the big penalty to doing this would be. Does it make these more expensive? It probably does. Yeah, I would imagine that it makes those a little bit more expensive. At this point, I think it's worth it. We're just going to colonize this. We'll colonize this and we'll just build all the production things like right off the bat. Uh, and we will also get the mining stuff built right off the bat so that we can have additional resources coming in. Uh, that can go down here below these. All right, that's fine. It does mean we have another system to defend, that's kind of annoying, but if it means getting four more Hyperium each turn, that's not bad, and I'm honestly considering turning up the number of Hyperium and Titanium gatherers we have on this, because the 150 science and dust isn't that great. Uh, alright. We could also use that to be our second Citadel ship and just build another one, but I think if we use it as a Citadel, it still counts against our Behemoth limit. So unless we unlock one more Behemoth, I don't really want to do that, which makes me wonder if there are even any Behemoth texts left on the tree that we could pick up. Uh, at least any that aren't super buried. Let's see, let's see, let's see. We are making really good use of the Behemoths, though, just being honest. Uh, actually, getting the Juggernaut blueprint wouldn't be a terrible idea. I'm going to put that right there. What did we put it in front of, though? Yeah, we're going to get that, because that's more important than our Titan for us. Uh, getting another Behemoth unlocked would allow us to do another Citadel without losing any of the Behemoths we're currently using, which is good. This should be an easy fight. Yeah, it's one versus four. They don't even have a chance. Uh, throw on our shields, push them on down, get some free key. We should check our war pressure now. What do you want? We're kind of busy. Plus two. Okay, so it's still not much. If we siege a system, it'll go up a lot. So now I'm more inclined to push for that siege. However, it's not really necessary because we're kind of destroying them now. Now that we have mixed weapon profiles, they can't just counter our ships like they were. Uh, so we're getting really, really good combat outcomes. And we have a ton more CP. We're up to 22 CP now, so like this fleet is no longer limited. That actually makes me want to come look at our cheap hole. Or wait, no, that's not it. Is that the... that's not the cheap, cheap ship we made, is it? Cheap Hunter. I think it might be. Let me check. I just want to make sure this is the right... We have so many ship layouts, I just want to make sure this is the right one. Yeah, okay, so this is the no special... Let's go ahead and build a couple Cheap Hunters here. We can put them after the Diligence Ritual. They probably won't take long to build because they're not very expensive. Yeah, so we can build three of these a turn and then just start shipping them down to reinforce fleets down here. And that actually is a really, really nice little bonus. Uh, if we can increase Hyperium generation, it also means that we can start doing siege ships, which will allow us to start sieging systems. Even if we siege the systems, though, we're not going to capture them. We're just going to ransack them so that we get resources. And then once we've ransacked them, we can go ahead and capture them with influence because they'll have to take peace from us at some point due to the war pressure. You are leading a fleet, so none of those are great. That's pretty good. That's not particularly good. That's really good. We want that. So we'll get the extra damage on fleet. All the he shows. Diligence rituals have popped pretty much everywhere. As well as some extra bonus things, it would seem. Electromagnetic shield, plasma intensifier, and there's that iron banner that we wanted. Venerable standard increases key gains in the area as well, which is awesome. And it also gives energy and projectile damage. That's pretty great. And it goes on titans and on behemoths. That's really, really cool. I actually like that a lot. Yeah, the latest survey shows militarists are off the hook. You think? Uh, we've been forced to go to war repeatedly. I'm sure the militarists are very happy right now. 
And yet again, it's like, hey, do you want to do something with this guy? No, game. If I wanted to do something with him, I would have done something with him five turns ago. Uh, okay. Cheap hunters are coming out of there. Everything is looking good. We have a little bit of dust to spend here. Let's see if we can pick up any more Hyperium. We can. There's 22 more on the market. We will buy all of it. Uh, we have no limitations on how much of those we're going to buy. Five turns from... Well, six turns, I guess, and we'll have the uh, first obelisk, so I'm excited about that. I'm going to try to zoom through some turns here pretty quick, because we're not doing a whole lot anyway. We're just sort of fighting a defensive war, and uh, if we can see the obelisk sooner than later, that would be really cool. Uh, okay. Our relations with you are a source of joy. Dude, why are you distressed? All you do is ask us for money and we give it to you. We're like best friends. You should be, like, super nice to us. Why are you tripping? Uh, we'll take the extra dust here because dust is going to be more beneficial than influence until we switch over to peace times. The obelisk of all space time is being built. Four turns. Oh, guys, I just got a really cool idea. Uh, okay, so I wonder if the obelisk will build faster than four turns if we switch everybody over to ancestral reverence right? Because that'll give the home system additional food and production. It would mean that we're going to take more turns to get to the Juggernaut Blueprints, though, so I'm not sure it's even worth it. Oh, they are sending fleet after fleet now. They really are trying to war up on us. Let's move this guy down and get him mixed in with this group uh, so that they've got a little extra firepower. And let's kill the guy that's here so that they don't end up amassing any extra ships here that we don't need them to have. Decisive victory. He has retreated. Right here we should have a very easy fight. You cannot attack an enemy when in a Cold War influence zone. Change your status with the Sheridan. Okay, so we we can't attack them because we're in the same influence zone as the, the Sheridan. That's ridiculous, but whatever. I'm gonna send one of these guys back, I think, then. Because that also means they can't attack unless they're at war with the Sheridan. So I'm going to send this guy back up here just to help hold this spot because you can see they've got a bunch of ships coming in there. This fleet down here should be okay to do its own business. Yeah, it is. And they're on full-on energy weapons. This is great. Now that they can't anti-type us, we're just not losing these fights at all anymore. Oh, wow. That was a draw. That actually hurt a little bit. Uh, and we created a system relic there, so that's cool. Yeah, he's going to need backup now. These guys are going to be fighting these whenever they land. Uh, okay. It's a good thing we started building battleships here. That's all I'm gonna say. Cheap battleships go! It's gonna take them five turns to get down there. That is very sad. Uh, we should maybe make some taxi support vessels to help them get down there faster. But at the same time, that would mean taking somebody... Well, Kerr can do it. Let's uh, go make sure that our speed boosting ships are... I think it's the Kestrel 3 is our speed boosters, yeah. And is there any way we can make this cheaper on them Hyperium-wise? There is not. That's going to take a lot of Hyperium. Okay, so let's make one of those taxi ships right now at this place, and we'll send it up here to catch these guys when they land. And hopefully that'll speed them down to here where they can join the rest of the combat fleets and really get some damage done. Uh, I'm not sure which of these guys I'd actually rather have a larger fleet on at this point. I do know that Folks Died here is almost done producing things, so we should start making a lot of cheap hunters here. Is it really going to take a turn apiece on those? That's kind of a pain. We could always buy more. Uh, we'll just do that for now and see how things go. Uh, this is This war is like getting ridiculously weird and heating up. Yeah, so that's more food to manpower. We're not really worried about that too much. Strong arm lobbying still our best chance here to make sure that religion stays in. It's unfortunate. <clears throat> Sorry, it's unfortunate that we can only do that for one party. Because if we could use strong arm lobbying for two parties, we could go uh, pacifist and then force peace. I think that if I was gonna do this whole thing over again, I would have like stayed in a dictatorship and used the thing that generates additional support for a party on pacifists and made pacifists our core party and then made religion our secondary party. That way I could keep us in a state of forced peace with people and the conversions would actually work a little bit better. 
Because right now we essentially have to fight people for the right to convert their colonies, which is annoying. Yeah, this is not going to go well for you guys, but you probably know that already. And you are all in on energy weapons. Are we all in on projectile weapons? We are on a lot of ships, which is why... Interesting. So our cheap holes are actually going to help us make that up. Uh, because we are actually kind of all in on projectiles, so that's why they're going all in on projectile defense. Decisive victory. Yeah, we just smashed those guys. That wasn't even comparable. Will be scoured, okay. You've given us a bureaucratic imbroglio. That's interesting. We don't care. If you want to fight, call me. Otherwise, shut up. More damage, please. Yes, all the damage. That combined with this is actually really solid, except for their fleet right now isn't using any energy weapons, so we're not getting any value from that, because I am bad at this game. Oh no, I'm wrong. This has two of the cheap holes in it, so it does have energy weapons, and we are getting value. Okay. I can live with that. Uh, we should have our Kestrel right here, ready to go. We'll ship him over to this system. It lets us. There we go. Ship him over here to meet up with his battleship buddies that he's going to cart down. Search the... Da -da -da. With 100 antimatter. I don't know what this is. The power behind the drones. And we will receive Mavro Skunk Works. Uh, not interested. Not really. You guys can have it. This, I'm a little bit more interested in, but we already seem to have lost it. Because, er, yeah, we already lost it. So this was happening on the other side of the galaxy, but we missed out on it. Because, like, for some reason, every time it spawns those, it always spawns them on the other side of the galaxy. They want a truce. They're willing to offer us 300 Decidious Trees. No, you guys screwed up. Pisces isn't in our area of influence anymore because of the damage that you did to folks died here. And because of that, we have no reason to let you have peace now because all we get is this crap system, Esh. When our influence surrounds Pisces again, you guys can have peace. Until then, prepare to die. Uh, all right, these guys should go down simple... This is a full projectile fleet, though, so they are tanked against us. Interesting. Still getting decisive victories there, though. They're still retreating on those fights a lot. Uh, this is actually the unit I want to fight here, because they'll have the better weapon setup. Yeah, this should be interesting. We should see a lot more damage against these guys. Oh, they retreated again, though. Can't do much when they retreat every, every round. Come on, guys. Why you gotta run away like that? Uh, this fleet is actually hurting really, really bad, and we should probably evacuate. We're gonna get them out of here and go this way. Join up with our uh, behemoth over here so that there's some safety. But that, unfortunately, is all the time we have for this episode, guys. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and click that like button. If you want to see more, click subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, at GamerUnderDev, to know when all the videos go live. I will see you next time. Bye! Bye.